In the fast-moving world of crypto and digital assets it can be hard to spot turning points, but in the case of decentralized finance, DeFi, it is reasonable enough to pinpoint 2020 as a seminal year. Total Value Locked TVL, in the system grew from $700 million in December 2019 to more than $20 billion a year down the line and estimated to be over $200 billion today. DeFi holds out the promise of doing most of the things that financial institutions do, earning interest, borrowing, lending, buying insurance, and trading assets, but doing it faster, without intermediaries, paperwork and bankers. It is a digital peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem, without borders, and is open to all, a digital alternative to Wall Street or the City of London without the associated costs of offices and people, and banker salaries, with a promise to create more open, free, and fair financial markets accessible to anyone. Maker, which many would call a pioneer and the very first DeFi project, is a permissionless lending platform responsible for the creation of DAI, the first decentralized stablecoin, built on Ethereum. Maker has long since held the top ranking on virtually all DeFi tracking platforms when it comes to the TVL of Ether. Inevitably the DeFi industry is attracting growing interest and investment from financial institutions, and exchanges are starting to offer DeFi products to customers. U.S. publicly listed Coinbase recently announced that it would start offering yields on stable coins to users. State Street, Fidelity and Bank of New York have invested heavily into crypto and are already offering services, these are three of the most conservative and biggest financial institution. That's telling you something. Notes Tim T. Sean, Chief Operating Officer of Cryptocurrency Exchange Dexalot. State Street, a custody bank that oversees more than $40 trillion in assets, launched its very own digital division last year through which it offers crypto services to private fund clients. We are even seeing people in the ultra-conservative repo markets, which usually deal with US Treasuries and and some of the yields being quoted by these repo participants are better than what I've seen on some borrowing platforms. Although the first wave of DeFi products were focused on borrowing, lending and staking, some parties are bullish about the sector's evolution, 